Russian sanctions are kicking into full gear, and it is surprising to see how difficult Europe is finding it to wean itself off the proverbial teat that is Mother Russia's oil and gas. And Europe doesn't appear to be the only ones, as the out-of-control oil price is demonstrating. There has never been a stronger catalyst than now for a renewable energy transition. The world's dependence on the oil industry has fueled despots and dictators for too long now, and it is high time we correct this mistake. Unfortunately, it seems that Russia has a chokehold on the renewable energies too, largely thanks to a materially significant nickel mining industry. There is an old cricket analogy that seems relevant to our current circumstance. The story goes that if you pick up a cricket ball in your left hand, and you already have one in your right hand, then it is a certainty that you now have the complete and undivided attention of the cricket. And that pretty much sums up Russia's hold on the energy markets right now. With oil and gas in the one hand, and the rather crucial ingredient for batteries, nickel, in the other. Now since I don't give a toss about oil and gas, it is the nickel problem that got my attention. And in this video, I plan to address three really important questions. How serious is the current situation? Do we have any alternatives? And what is the strategy long term? So how serious a problem are we currently dealing with? Well, the problem here is largely attributed to this company, Norilsk Nickel currently the world's largest nickel producer, although it does appear that it might have lost that title to China's Qingchang Holding Company. It is also a bit of a tongue twister to pronounce. I've been practicing this over and over and over. Now, as to how serious this is. Well, Norilsk is currently not actually on the sanctions list, but they have been hit hard, largely due to shipping restrictions that have made it difficult for them to export. As to why they haven't been sanctioned yet is anyone's guess. It appears, according to this Forbes article I highly recommend you read, and I quote, some oligarchs are more important for policy reasons than others. I'll post a link to the article in the description. This is naturally a rapidly changing situation, so it is likely that sanctions will eventually kick in. But just how important is Norris to the battery electric vehicle industry? They are currently the largest or second largest global producer. But Russia itself is only the third largest producing country and currently only accounts for about 10% of global production volumes. Based on a US geological survey from 2019. Okay, I cheated. I got the reference in a Wikipedia article. I didn't actually read an entire US geological survey report. My current preferred insomnia cure is still Tolstoy's War and Peace. I have never made it past page 10. Indonesia are the reigning kings of nickel production, accounting for almost 30% of volume. And the Philippines are currently almost double Russia's output and growing while Russia's output is declining. So are we out of the woods then, so to speak? Well, not exactly. The issue is twofold. Firstly, unlike other metals and minerals needed for batteries, like lithium and cobalt, nickel actually has existing widespread industrial demand. 70% of all nickel is used in the stainless steel industry while batteries currently only consume less than 5% of nickel production. So the effective range in your electric vehicle is literally competing against volume production of the exoskeleton of the Cybertruck, or SpaceX rockets, or the cutlery in your home, or, or the beer kegs that will be used for the celebrations when the first electric vehicle rolls off a GM production line. Now the second issue is one of quality. Not all mines produce nickel in a purity or grade fit for battery production. In fact, a significant proportion of them, and unfortunately I haven't been able to find the actual percentage, make products known as ferro-nickel or, when the grade is really low, nickel pig iron. Now ferro-nickel is really just an iron-rich, less refined nickel. But nickel pig iron really does have little something to do with those plump, pink, delicious sources of bacon. It is an ultra-low grade nickel invented by Chinese stainless steel manufacturers in response to high nickel prices. The name comes from the traditional molding practice in which individual ingots were cast at right angles to the central channel. This apparently resembled a litter of piglets being nursed by a sow. And somehow, all those years ago, the name stuck. The invention of nickel pig iron is what enabled Indonesia and the Philippines to be such dominant suppliers in today's markets. Nickel pig iron, or NPI, really only has a single application. It is used in the production of stainless steel. How is not important for now. What is important is how it is extracted. Without boring you too much, 
Nickel is predominantly mined out of two types of ore bodies in either laterites, which make up around 75% of the world's deposits, or sulfide deposits, like what Talon Metals is planning on processing. Now, laterite deposits again break down into two principal ore mixtures, limonite and garnierite. Limonite is the useful stuff for Chinese stainless steel manufacturers. They are basically taking the ore itself and putting it into their smelters which is why Indonesian and Philippine supply is of little value for battery cathodes at present. I have attempted to quantify the problem. Reportedly, a typical EV uses around 30 kilograms of nickel, or 66 pounds, for those who live in non-imperial countries but still use imperial standards of measurement. 6.6 .6 million electric vehicles were sold in 2021, and I think this figure is likely to top 10 million in 2022. That is little more than 10% of total nickel production volumes in 2021. Now the thing to note is the explosive growth in battery electric vehicles came out of nowhere. It is going to take a while for the supply demand forces to reach equilibrium. And until then, the Russia situation is going to sit heavy on our investor nerves. Do we have alternatives? Sure we do. LFP batteries don't use nickel at all. And they all come with certain inherent benefits. Cheaper to make longer lasting since they have a higher cycle life, and safer since they are not prone to thermal runaways and are therefore not that interesting to oil lobbyists and anti-Tesla folk who are constantly looking for evidence that EVs are latent balls of fire versus gasoline cars that literally have the word combustion in their categorization. The downside though is that LFP batteries discharge more when idle, which is not an issue when you use your vehicle daily, but somewhat of a problem for long-term storage. And, more importantly, they have less energy density, therefore less range. So for as long as vehicle manufacturers continue to chest beat about how great their package under the hood is, the slower the adoption of LFP will be. And lastly, what is the long-term play here? I reported that NPI is of little use to a battery manufacturer. But that doesn't mean it can't be used. It just needs to be refined first. And this is, unfortunately, an expensive, dirty, and energy-consuming process. This is because they have to use coal-fired furnaces to smelt and further refine the ore. And that is the clean part. Don't get me started on the acid leaching techniques that get employed to extract the ore. Now, for bunny-hugging climate activists like myself, this is obviously a problem. But the alternative is no battery at all. Also, once nickel is in the battery ecosystem, it'll basically last forever since batteries can be recycled. So I think this is a really small price to pay up front for a sustainable future for generations to come. Which brings us back to Indonesia. In 2019, Indonesia supplied over 800,000 tons of nickel. As mentioned, 30% of the world's total production. And then in 2020, the Indonesian government placed a ban on exporting nickel pig iron in order to stimulate investment into local smelters. Good for batteries, but bad for stainless steel. The initiative appears to be working. Indonesia has a stated objective of getting involved higher in the value chain of battery manufacture. And it would honestly not surprise me to see companies like Tesla start building battery manufacturing centers there. We also have a wide range of new nickel projects coming online. Up until recently, nickel was not a popular metal to mine. It is costly to extract and the price has always been pretty volatile especially once the Chinese steel producers started embracing the use of NPI. But battery electric vehicles are changing all of this. The demand is now so high that it is preferable for companies to invest in long-term supply agreements or even into the mines themselves. This greatly improves the ability to forecast and plan capex requirements. So to summarize, I don't think we have much to worry about with regards to the long-term supply of nickel. When the world's largest suppliers like Indonesia want to start playing larger roles in the upstream value chain, the future for batteries looks bright. That was a vastly different situation when Elon Musk made his Twitter plea in 2020. The world then was still getting to grips with the immense size of the battery electric vehicle market. Now I haven't mentioned sulfide ores, which make up around 30% of all deposits. Sulfides seem to lend themselves to more environmentally friendly alternatives. Check out my Talon Metals video I've posted here. And I still maintain that the largest risk to battery electric vehicles remains lithium supply. I have shared my thoughts in this video, which you can find via this link. It is the one ingredient that is needed in every battery chemistry. Thank you so much for listening.